Welcome to the Train Bands of Bristol's blog. As the train bands, we portray and reenact citizens of this town in Tudor England, specifically in 1574. I'm Jeff Shoemaker, and I have the job of harbor pilot. So this series of videos will explore practical navigation. What were the actual techniques, equipment, and skills the English developed to navigate, and how can we utilize them too? Since there isn't a readily available direct source for these skills, we'll have to piece together a story from various modern piloting books, scholar historical articles, and even 16th century navigational guides themselves. Some of these books have the best subtitles, by the way. One of my favorites uh, from the New Skipper's Bowditch, piloting from here to there and home again with maximum pleasure and minimum trauma. Now, when we think of the English national identity, a strong nautical tradition comes to mind. Think Nelson and Trafalgar, Horatio Hornblower and Jack Aubrey. Yet they were slow to adopt the navigational techniques during King Henry VIII's reign, and they quickly found themselves far behind. You could maybe say he was a bit distracted, but there are many reasons for this. The Spanish and Portuguese, meanwhile, had been utilizing celestial navigation techniques for over a hundred years, and their colonization efforts were making them fantastically rich. The English, realizing they liked money too, would try to learn, buy, or steal this information by any means possible. So we're going to learn what the English sea dogs needed to learn, starting with the very basis of piloting, dead reckoning. You might recognize this from the Red Route 1 scene in Hunt for Red October. Give me a stopwatch and a map and I'll fly the Alps in a plane with no windows. But we also need to go over why deck reckoning is just the worst, with many chances for error. So we'll be doing a video on how to correct for these inaccuracies by fixing a position using a compass. These techniques are very similar to modern orienteering methods, so you might find them unuseful on the hiking trail as well. From there, this series will continue with a video where we take an example journey across the 16th century chart and introduce the exact tools the English used in 1574 as we go. But in order to cross an ocean, we have to leave sight of land and navigate by what we can see, the sun and the stars. Specifically, we'll need to go over how to do a noon sighting. You will come across it over and over again in historical works of fiction, and you'll see the tools in museums, yet very rarely is described how the noon sighting was obtained, and especially not why it works. Within a few years of the time period we portray, the English would start utilizing these techniques and then continue to do so for hundreds of years, right up to the invention of the GPS. In fact, an article came out recently how the Navy was bringing back the teaching of celestial navigation to their cadets. They realized they become so reliant on GPS, they need a backup if it fails. Probably after watching Tomorrow Never Dies. Lining up on top of each other. Somebody's tampered with your encoder. Anyway, I'm really excited to bring this all together. So I hope you like or subscribe and follow the blog and we post more videos to the series.